All right, so remember that the whole purpose of all of this is to identify the formula and structure of our compound. And a good place to start is the molecular mass of a compound. So for example, um, let's just say, say you take a look at your mass spec and you find out that your molecule has an molecular ion peak of 144, right? Grams per mole or whatever units you wanna use. Um, you wanna think about some options of what could it be? Right, and so this is where the rule of 13 comes in handy. Um, what we're doing here is we're assuming since we're in organic chemistry that we're uh, studying organic compounds and orga organic compounds almost always have carbons and hydrogens. And so if you think about a carbon and a hydrogen combined, they're gonna have a mass about 13. And so that's where the rule of 13 comes from. Uh, what you do is you take your molecular ion peak and then you divide it by 13. Um, in this case, we get 11. And then the decimal point you leave as a remainder, right? So we'll get 11 with a remainder of one. And so what this 11 tells you is that you have, or could have 11 CHs. And what this remainder of one tells you is that it could be one extra H. And so your formula, you could have C11H12, right? That is a molecular formula that would add up to a mass of 144 grams per mole. That does not mean that that's the formula of your compound, but it's just a good starting point, right? It gives you some options to think about. And so maybe you take a look at some other data and maybe you take a look at IR spectra. And your IR spectra shows a strong peak at approximately 1700, right? And so that means that we probably have a carbonyl. We have a carbonyl, which means that we have an oxygen. An oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole. And so if you're thinking about what could be composed of uh, carbons and hydrogens to make up 16 grams per mole, you're thinking of here a CH4, right? A carbon weighs 12, hydrogen um, weighs one each, so that'll add up to 16. So what you do is you take your formula, C11, H12, you subtract out the CH4, and so it could maybe be C10, H8, oxygen, right? That might be the formula of it. It might not, it might be. Um, remember, we can also think about, well, what if we have less carbons and more hydrogens? So we could say, yeah, maybe it's C10, H8, O, or maybe it's C9, H20, O, right? I decreased the carbon count by one. And since carbon has a molecular mass of 12, I increased the hydrogen count of tw by 12, right? And so you can see how this kind of gives you clues about what your compound could be. So let's take a look at an example. Um, and so here we have a mass spectra. We go ahead and find our molecular ion peak. And what we notice here is that we have two evenly sized peaks. That must mean that bromine is present, right? So we used that clue there. And then if we were to take a look at our masses here, this would be 122 grams per mole. And then this other one would be 124 grams per mole. And so we know that bromine is present. And so we wanna see what else is there, right? Bromine is in our molecular formula. And so we could take the 122, subtract out a bromine. In this case, it'd be the 79. Or the 124, subtract out a bromine. In this case, it'd be 81. Either way, you get 43 grams per mole, right? We use our rule of 13, divide this number by 13. And what you get is three with a remainder of four. And so that tells us that we have three CHs. So we have C3. H3, the remainder of four tells us that we could have four extra hydrogens. And then we also have a bromine, right? So this ends up being with C3H7Br, right? And so you can think of ways you could uh, make this molecule. Maybe the bromine is centered around these three carbons, or maybe it's around there, right? There's a whole bunch of constitutional isomers um, you could draw out that could be plausible answers. Um, and so to figure out which one it is, we would need IR 
or NMR. IR won't really help you, so it's really NMR for more info. You could try to take a look at the fragmentation pattern of your compound, uh, but that's the harder route. NMR is going to be the easier way to go. Um, but you want to use this rule of 13 as a starting point.